Welcome to Lambdas.com. In the previous video, we looked at how to configure NAT64 and NAT46 using Object NAT on the Cisco ASA to allow communication between an IPv6 and v4 network. In this video, we will pretty much repeat the same lab but using twice NAT. So we're still going to be covering stateless NAT46 and NAT64, stateful NAT64 including static, dynamic NAT, and PAT, DNS64, and stateful NAT46. For our lab topology, we have ASA running version 9.1.1. We have a router R2 and R3 on the outside and the inside. On the left-hand side of the ASA, we have IPv6 network with VLAN 133 connecting the firewall 1 to R3. And the right-hand side, we have the IPv4 network with VLAN 12 connecting firewall 1 to R2. And we also have the Windows 2008 DNS server at the IP of dot 32. On R3, we have three loopback interfaces, 1, 2, and 3, configured with IPv6 networks. And on R2, we have loopback 0 and 1 that we will be using to simulate our IPv4 network. And we have a monitor session set up to capture packet on the outside and inside the firewall, sent to a Wireshark machine, so we can take a look and see how the packet gets translated as it traverses the ASA. Now, on the top here, we have a list of the network address translation that we will be performing in this lab, and we'll go through each of these one by one when we go through all the tasks. Now just to reiterate how the configuration in this lab will be done using twice NAT. With that said, with task number one, we have stateless NAT46 and NAT64. So first we need to configure NAT on firewall one and any necessary static routes to allow R3 loopback one to communicate with any IPv4 addresses on the outside. So that R3 loopback one appears as 3303 and any IP addresses appears to R3 with the prefix of 2122 and then followed by the corresponding IPv4 addresses in hexadecimal. We have a requirement that only one twice NAT command can be used. And then we need to verify later on that our stateless configuration works by changing R3 loopback one to 201310 and make sure it still show up as 33016. So let's take care of those first, starting with configuration R3. R3 needs to know how to reach the rest of the subnet, so we need to configure a static route on R3. So here R3 config t configure IPv6 route with the default route colon colon slash zero pointing to our firewall one inside interface which is 2100123 one and then let's enable debug IPv6 ICMP. Okay so same thing has to be completed in R2 to point back to firewall one to the subnet they will be translated all the IPv6 to which if you look up here, most of them starts with 3.3. .3. So in R2, we'll configure IP route 3300, just do slash 16 to keep it simple. So that should be sufficient. Pointing to the firewall outside interface, which is 172.16.12.1. Also enable IP ICMP debug. Okay, now on the firewall one, let's first verify reachability to R3. 0, 0, 1, 2, 3, 3. and also reachability to the R2. Okay, then we need to configure a static route with firewall 1 point to R3 for all of the R3 loopbacks, and you can see this starts with 2001, 3, and we can do slash 62 here since we have three contiguous slash 64 subnets, and then we have to configure static route point to the loopback. 0 and 1 on R2 as well. So first we do the IPv6 route and that's going to be off the inside interface 2013 slash 62 pointing to 2001 and then route outside 1 say 16 which is R2 loopback 0 pointing to 12.2 and then for RT loopback one, one, two, one, one, two, one. Now, if you understand or have dealt with twice NAT before, you know that the twice NAT allows you to do both source and destination translation within a single NAT command. So first we need to come up since the whole NAT statement is constructed based on objects. So first we do object network and this is or this will be matching the R3 loopback interface. So we'll call it real 2001.3. And that's going to match the subnet of 2001.3 slash 120. And this is because we only plan to map the last octet to the IPv4 we can see here. And 
and that's only 8 bits. That's why from 128 minus 8 becomes 120. Obviously, if you want to map a larger subnet, you would need to adjust the prefix length accordingly. But here we're just going to do the last octet. Although there isn't really a requirement for the task, we just want to keep it simple. So on the IPv4 side, we do slash 24, and then v6 would do matching prefix with the same size, which is a slash 120. Now with the object network, we just did the real, we're going to have to do the map. So we're mapping 2013 to 3300. And the scroll 24 just to indicate the size of the subnet. And then the actual subnet is 3300, 255255550. Again, since we're doing one to one, the size of the subnet has to match. We need to do one more object network. And this is to map the destination and we set the destination right here we want to map 2001 22 with whatever embedded ipv4 address and that's how the firewall is going to know how the ipv6 will be translated to ipv4 using that embedded ip so for example if it's 2001 22 101 201 it knows that firewall needs to extract the last 32 bits or four octets and then translate it to corresponding ipv4 which in this case is 1121 Okay, so now we need to specify that 2122 prefix. So we're going to call it 2122. And then for the subnet is 2122 slash 96. Since we're mapping the whole IPv4 address space, which is 32 bits, 128 minus 32 is 96. Okay, now that we have all the object network or all the objects in place, we can now complete our NAT statements. And that's going to be NAT inside, outside. So we're still going from inside out or IPv6 to v4. With the source static, since everything's going to be one to one. And then the real IP, which is where the IP is going to be coming from. And we want to map that to this. And then we have the destination against to static. So you can see, unlike the object net, where you separate that to two sets of command. Here, we're just combined to a single command. And the corresponding object for this is going to be map 2001, which is where the destination is going to be before it gets untranslated. And since we map to the whole IPv4 space, it doesn't matter, or we don't really need to specify the subnet for that. So it's just going to be any. And then we can enter. Okay, so before we do the ping, let me start the Wildshark. Start. Okay, and then from R3, let's do a quick test by pinging 2001.22. The first IP we're going to ping is of R2 loopback 0, and that will be AC10.2 right here, which is mapped to 172.16.02. So ping AC10.2, sourcing from loopback 1. You can see that is successful. And if you jump onto R2, you can see R2 is seeing the source coming from 3303. Okay, we can also try to ping R2 loopback one as well, which is 101201. Same thing here, you can see it gets translated to 1121. All right, let's stop the Wireshark. Scroll up and look at the first batch of the ICMP. You can see the original request is coming from 2133, packet being ICMPv6 with type echo request going towards 2001.22 AC10.2. Once it passed through the ASA, leaving the interface, the source becomes 3303. Our destination is 172.16.02. And the type of ICMP has become version 4, which is the regular ICMP with type 8, and then it's echo request. Okay, here's ping reply or ICMP reply, leaving the ASA, going back towards R3. You can see the IPs, everything gets mapped back to the IPv6. Same thing happened when we're trying to ping R2 loopback 1. It's translated to 1121. And everything else looks pretty much the same. Okay, and so from R3, let's try to telnet 2122, 101, 201, sourcing from loopback 1. And let me enable telnet, so line pty04. Okay. Let's try telnet one more time, Cisco, 
And since the telnet session is up, we should be able to do show connection. And we can see the source IP 2003 to a destination that maps to 1121. Show net, you can see 12 hits in and out. And then show x slate. Here, the single twice NAT statement gets split into two separate NAT here, one for inside out and one for outside in. And since the NAT by default is bi-directional, if we initiate a ping from R2 to 3303, sourcing from loopback 0, you can see that it is successful. And if we source from loopback 1, you can see that it is successful as well. You can see the source IP that it's coming from is different. That's for loopback 0, R2 and that is from loopback 1 of R2. Okay, now we need to prove that our stateless NAT4664 is actually works by changing our three loopback interface. So let's take a look at that and make sure that continues to work even though the loopback interface is changed. So let's get rid of the existing one. My hands just slip. Okay, so we need to change that to 2001310 and 10 in hex corresponds to 16 in decimal. So the last octet should still be mapped. If we change that to 10, and then up arrow and see if we can do a ping here real quick, sourcing from loopback one. Looks like uh, it didn't take the command because I did not remove the no at the front. Yep, so loopback zero. There you go. Yep, that should do the trick there. Ping again, successful ping. Looks like it's not changing the IP, so let's see why. I think I changed the incorrect loopback. It was loopback 0. It should be loopback 1 that we change, so... Okay, so let's do it correctly this time. Get rid of the loopback 1, replace it with 10. If you don't remove it, it will show up as a second IP on the same interface. And now if we try to ping, here you can see that the IP that R2 is seeing is coming from is now 33016, which verify that our stateless NAT 6446 are working correctly. Okay, so let's go back and take a look at our task. Here we just completed this one right here. The next part says we do not want to allow traffic to be initiated from the IPv4 side of the network, and we are not allowed to use access list to accomplish that. So what we are able to do with the twice NAT is to use the unidirectional option. So if you do up arrow right here where we configure a twice NAT command and question mark, you see here we have a unidirectional options to enable the session to be initiated just from one side or the inside. But before we can go ahead and enter that, we need to remove that command. So then do show NAT just to make sure it's not there. And then at the end, just do unidirectional. Let me remove up the no at the front. Enter. And then just show that one more time. You can see right here the command now has the unidirectional option appended. Okay, so just do a quick test from R3. Let me up arrow and ping. Sourcing from loopback 1. You can see that it is successful. But if we get onto the R2, and if you try to ping 33016, which is the where the app traffic or the ping was coming from and then source it from say loopback zero you can see the ping is not coming back and that's because we specified the unidirectional keyword in our NAT here so let's return that and remove the unidirectional and then let's try that ping one more time you can see the ping went through just fine without having the unidirectional option specify okay so now that part is done Let's clean up get back one real quick here. Return that IP back to three. So no three. All right. So that completes our task number one.